Hello again, it's me, Milton, the Little Milto channel. Today, hopefully, I can actually explain to you how you can make your own stair runners. That's before you put the treads on. This is actually the runners that actually go to actually make the steps. We decided to do our own because we went out, we went to, I'll name them Wix, we had a look at theirs because we've got this project going at the minute that we're going to lift the backyard up, you see. And they didn't have quite what we wanted, but we could have made do with what they had. But when we looked at what they had, which was £26 for one, and we were going to need four of them, it was going to be, basically speaking, just over £100. So we worked out by buying the wood ourselves, the three different screw sizes, which again I'll explain later, the glue to do with this, we did the whole lot for just under £60 and we get what we want, we get the length as well I don't know if you can see the one over there behind is I'll just turn it around so you can have a look at that one over there that one I've actually done, I've been working on it because I had to find out what are the pitfalls were going to be on it I'm just going to have a look at this, you can see it a bit better well, who knows, right, you've seen it now anyway move this back again to me ah, there, there Right, a bit, a bit more this way. Right. So we decided, after looking at the Wex ones, we'll make our own. Because, uh, to be honest with you, they weren't that good. And we felt as if we could do better, and we did. And the only problem we really had was getting the angle just right for the runners, because the actual steps go on this bit, not this bit. We got confused with the Wex one. We were actually looking at them the wrong way around. It's actually the big bit where the tread goes, and they, they've only got a rise of roughly 2.2 feet 6 inches actually in height, but we actually need a lot higher than that. So, anyway, we decided we'll make our own. So, after a bit of messing about, it took me a week to get this far. Uh, quite a lot of cutting, the beams were heavy, and of course, I was reliant again on my sons and my dad to move things about and get things done. So, we've done it. So today, I'll show you, hopefully, how it was done. I must admit that I went a bit OTT with it, but at the same time, I can explain to you the bits. You don't really have to do that. You don't have to do this. So, anyway. So, anyway, how did we actually achieve this? How did we get this, the angle and everything on here? Well, for a full board, which you will see shortly, it all came down to 8 inches at the end of the day and that's what we decided on and that's how we got it so I think now what we should do is we should go now and have a look exactly how we actually achieved it and what we did to get there as I said all some of the processes like the lanishing down and all the rest of it you don't have to do that it's a bit pointless it is for the stair runners themselves and that's what they are these are the actual runners here that the steps go on to the steps won't be getting built this year, that'll be next year. And this year is 2018 and this is January? January, this, this, is month, this month is January. So it won't be until next year when we finally get everything together because of the cost involved in it. It's quite expensive. But as I said, we've done this for just roughly £60, just slightly under £60. And that was even buying the glue. And the glue wasn't cheap, the glue was tenner. It was this stuff, £10 something. It was this, Evo stick wood adhesive. And I'm not joking, it is absolutely unbelievable glue. It is brilliant. When it eventually go goes on and hardens, it more or less makes it solid. Anyway, so we'll go in out and we'll have a quick look at how it was done, the angles, how I cut them and everything, setting up the stops and every and all this. So we'll take off now and we'll go and have a look at that then. Now, this is how we managed to get the angle right for this. As I said, we played about with it for a bit and we decided that if we did it at 8 inches and this is how we did it put the tape measure on here, grab a little pencil mark it here at 8 inches there do another mark for a reason 8 inches there, to tally then with our trusty square make sure not to be square, we join the dots 
object, making sure that it's square. Now this is the wood we used. I'll give you some measurements of the wood. It was 100, sorry, it was 2.4 meters long. Actually, that's a bit long, I suppose. Back a bit there. there, right, 2.4. I'll give you some width measurements just now. Depth on it was according to this, uh, that's what well, five and three quarter inches there. I know I'm getting doing this here, I'm not doing it in millimeters, I know. And I suppose you could say it's near enough one, yeah. One and three quarters there. No, I'm not going to do that in millimeters. I'm just doing this quick, right? Anyway, so we set this up in here. We got the line just right how we wanted it. Like this, the lines you put there, like so. Then we set up the stops, like so, moving this over and tightening it down, so all the rest would come out all identically the same, <clears throat> right? So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and I'll just remove the stop out of the way just now. I'll just check make sure this is in alignment. Are we all plugged in down here? Yeah, we must be here. All right, okay then. So here goes the cut. Let's see if it's recording. Everything's going good. Now, quick check, this should be bang on eight. Yeah, it's slightly under. It's per usual, that line always seems to do that. Anyway, good mark. Then, next thing is, ah, forgot the big long tape measure. Oh well, let's see if this will do it. No, it's not gonna do it. So, roll and surely, can we do it this way? Yeah, we can. We can do it this way. You go now, you go from corner to corner. Just gonna so do it like so. Okay, a bit of movement there. All right. So when we went from corner to corner here, right? But then I've marked it the right way around. No, I haven't. I've marked it the wrong way around. Of course, it has to go that way. Typical, isn't it? <sighs> So I'll get it corner to corner. And we seem to have a fly or a wasp or a bee or something in the cellar. Right. Okay, that's corner to corner now. Leave that there. Then we've got the envious job of trying to find it. Now the two ways you can do this. You can do it this way if that's what you want and find the angle that way, you see, but what we did was, we wanted, the angle, we wanted to do it this way, so what we did, what, what I've done, dun, dun, sorry, what I've done is, I've very quickly marked it up here, all right, so roughly the line should be about there, you then have to uh, remove this out of the way because it's going to get in the way, I know it will. Uh, can I get it out of the way? We don't need this, just now. Get out of the way. No, it's not going to go. Right. I'm doing this a bit back to front, if you like. Now, then, we put this like so. So it was more or less, first of all, we know if we had the angle right or not, which we actually have. First time round got the angle, because I marked it with a bit of tape, you see. So we've got the angle. Move this to lift it completely and utterly at centre point. Come on. Right, that now is that centre point with that line. Move it along. Just wants to be slightly more this way. Oh, there is a bit too much. I should do a bit of it. Slide it back. Yeah. Right, now, once that was in place, we then, again, locked this in. Now, the reason is, you've got to put a block here, which is quite tall. If you don't, 
This arm's so long it can move and wobble about, but if you actually keep it this distance short, you get it. And every single one, once this is set right, every single one after that comes out bang on right. It, it doesn't matter. If you always go to the stop and you cut them, and you've cut them all at eight bang on eight inches, they will all come out the same. Now, so what I'm going to do now is a slightly reposition now for this, so you can actually see it. Okay then, I'll we'll switch this off just now. Okay, ready to cut then. Here we go. Now, you'll know if you've got them right because when you put them both together they should completely and utterly perfectly line this one was slightly slightly out by about ooh, a quarter of a millimeter to be quite honest with with you but i don't think anybody would notice on the treads so what would we what do we do next well what i did was i left them with little bits of bars and everything on them for the time being and then I marked them up and I'm going to show you now how I actually marked them up okay then now next job is marking up for the holes <laughs> it's not that hard what I did was I made these bits of wood here cut them and then I eventually marked up exactly where I wanted the holes and I'm going to show you how I did that now so very quickly mark all these up so I've got loads of things lying about right marked up there top right I put it on there like so. I got to do it the wrong way around. Right? Then took this, marked, marked. I'll do this one as well at the same time because I've got it in my hand. Give it to the top like so. And then just put this down just now there. Yeah. Like so. Right, that's that one done. We don't need that one anymore. Go away. Keeping the drill in my hand. I also made one for this side. Yes, yeah, so we're putting three screws in. All three screws are different sizes. I'll explain that when I'm actually doing the job. Right. Yeah. Not allowed to clamp it in the vise. Makes it a little bit easier. But, well, I'm just here racing through this, you see? Trying to show you how I actually did it. Now, keeping it straight on there like so. Yeah, a bit of a difference in the sizes, but we'll, I'll show you how to sort that out. There we go. Now, they're all drilled, we don't need that one now. So, then I took it to the vise, here. Well, just tighten down there, tighten down there. Then with our Milwaukee impact driver, which has got a countersink, which is, this is a 12mm countersink, I then countersunk them. <laughs> Feeling for the little lip, there it is, it's there, same with this one. Now, the reason for countersinking these holes is because the screw heads are large. And the reason why we separate them so they're not in line with each other is the wood would split. So I say it's got more chance of it splitting. You see? So the only one that is really center point is actually this one here. So, so we get for not having things tight enough in the vise. I think it's almost really better. Yeah. Yeah, that's that one done. 
Now we do the next one. Okay. Uh, the vice should mount. Let's come along here a bit. So you can eliminate some of that vibration. Put you down here for the time being. There you are. Bit more. Forgetting that this is actually an impact, and I pushed down a bit too hard, and it actually, actually activated the impact mode here. Actually, makes a great countersinking tool this, because it's fast, and you know if you're pushing too hard, because the impact thing activates on it. Right. Touch more. Oh yeah. Perfect. Now, next. As I said, they're not quite the same size. And they're a bit rough looking as well. So, where do we go next? We go to the... Ow! Well, there you go. A bit of a blooper the moment. That hurt. Right. Now, the next part of the job is part of the, the bit I like playing with this machine here, the Bauer belt sander. Now we know that one of these is slightly bigger, so we're going to work on this one to get to the same size by rubbing it backwards and forwards, twisting it slightly and keeping an even motion round. That's very easy to use these machines, but I'm going to show you in a way one of the easy ways. If you actually sat there and tried to do this just like this all the time, you would actually wear it down uneven. So what you do is you do so much on this way, then you turn it around and you do so much this way. And if you move it around as well, about, and keep it moving, don't keep it continuously on the same part of the belt all the, all the time. Try and keep even pressure, because if you push down harder on one side, you'll remove more material off the other side. They are a great machinist, but they do take a little bit of getting used to belt sanders. Of course, this isn't. Well, this is a belt sander, right enough. Um, you get the other ones which you hold in your hand, which I've used for years, uh, upside down. But I thought it was about time we moved on. Anyway, enough of that, and I will show you how it's actually done. it was roughly about a quarter of a millimetre out of um, difference in the actual size. They wouldn't have made any actual difference to the actual steps themselves at the end of the day. You would never have noticed them. Because the main wood itself, the actual that it sits on, they're a bit bent themselves. So anyway, we've done that. Now we've got to have a quick clean up job on them and I'll show you how that's done very quickly. Like removing the marks here and removing the pencil mark off there. It's not really important. You're never going to see them. 
And of course, because the fact was the countersink went and it's left a little lip up on there as well, I'll remove that as well and I'll clean up the ends here as well. And I'll show you how oh, that's done. We're just doing one. I'll pick the worst one for you. This one here seems to be the worst. Where is it? No, this one here is the worst. We'll use this one. Okay then. You don't actually really have to go ballistic and actually use one of these and clean them all up because it is kind of a pointless task because what you're doing is a part of stairs, they go that way up, then you put your decking on top of it here like this. So, so really and truly, you'll never see it. It's just that uh, I'm a bit pernickety if you like, or OCD, whatever, and I just want it to look right and I've got the time to do it, so I will take the time out and I will do this. You see? So anyway, there's one done now. The rest are all done upstairs. As I said, you can see why Stuckey is now about a week to actually get this far on where I am now. But see, working out that angle was fun. And once we got that right, it was plain sailing after that. And once we set the stops up, they all came out basically the same anyway. This one was because it wasn't 100%. Right, I'll get on now. I'll do this one and then we'll go back to the outside and watch them getting fitted in a Place. Okay then. Right, I'm going to go away now and I'm actually going to put one of these on. You've seen now how it was built. Alright, don't have to put as many screws in. You don't have to use as many different sizes of screws that I did. I'm using three different sizes. 120, 130 and 140mm by six screws. Right? The reason is for this. I know what's going to happen. My lot will end up trying to all climb up and down the steps all at the same time. The ones you get out of, say, Wix, the decking type things. And all they're really for is for projects that you'd have maybe three, four, five years. Then you get bored with it, you strip it out, you take it all your bits again. So they don't really have to be that good, to be honest with you. But this is going to be here for a long time, so I've got to get this right. And this is why the screws are staggered. The fact is, if they were in line, there would more chances they would split in. And of course, this one is in centre, so energy runs up here and energy is running up this way, you see, to pull it in place, and this is why. So anyway, how do we get these on? No problem at all, where's my pencil? I'll take my time on this one, otherwise it'll end up messing up as usual. Draw it in place. Get a little pencil line here, just a small mark. Why? So you know not to put too much glue on there. Right? So we'll take our glue, now, put a little cap off it. And believe you me, you got five minutes, and then that, that the glue went off. So we take a little run, like so, coming up here like so, stop short there, we've got enough on there. 
and put the cap back on, especially in this heat. I'd like to keep it in the shade actually, but I can't. Oh yes, I can. I'll put it down here. There. I'll put the glue there. It's in the shade. Now we take our bit of wood. Oh, it's here. And we place it on. As best as we can for the time being, because we need our clamp now. I'll put the clamp like this actually today. So I'm not actually hiding anything. Move this box out of the way. Right. Now, gotta keep moving this thing into place. Now, these holes are all pre pilot hold, but they're not all the way down. Except this one here, it can go all the way down. And I'm gonna show you for why. When you start actually screwing in, because of the size of the screw, it causes a lot of torque and it moves them. Because I can only get one clamp on this. By doing that, that means the first screw that goes in goes in a lot better. But if you're worried about them pulling about, you could also at the same time not fully put a screw in. You see, screws go like this. You see, and these ones, which are slightly longer, go like this and this. So what you could do is put a screw in there quickly and grab it to stop the whole thing from moving around. That's why I put that hole in there because it doesn't move. Ooh. Okay. Uh, now we finally get to see the Milwaukee Surge Impact Hydraulic Drive. And this is when impacts now do come into their own, trust me. I would hate to use a combi drill or a drill driver with this job. Right, hold it, make sure it doesn't move. Oh, yeah. That's it, it's that in your place. I know it goes into place because it pulls it slightly. Right, where's my hammer? There it is. And it did it again. On the floor. Yeah, back into place again. Yep. Now, oh, I've got blue in my hand. Yeah, cool. It's flying over. Right. We now go for 130. Right. I know you can't see this going in very well, but no, oh, tough. See? And of course, the surge, very, very controllable for these jobs. This is really why we have impacts for doing big jobs like this. And yeah, we're all guilty of it. We all use them for silly little screws. 50, 60, 70 mil. Right, any place, no problem. Right. And you can see now how it actually works. Now, can I give you a different angle on this one? Not really. It's a bit awkward. I'll try bringing you maybe across here, I think. We'll see if we can maybe... There? Maybe here? coming in yeah so what I'll do I'll slide this down a bit because I can right and I'll try it this way can we try it okay then whoa knocking everything to pop. right we'll try something out we'll move the camera to a different position when I find the little switch right right hopefully this comes out if it doesn't tough luck right pencil lush it to there right so small pencil marks so we don't over glue because this glue does go off rather quickly. Get the glue. <sighs> All we need. It's weird stuff this. When it starts going off it goes white. And it foams up like uh, spray foam. Oh, great, there it is. Okay, we'll place this on here like so. Touching up here and there. Right. Got a bit, a bit awkward this one because it's not quite sitting right. I don't know why. Right, clamp. We'll put the clamp up the other way so we don't take up too much room. These screws a bit out of the way. Ooh, here we go. Just want to pull there. Yeah. No, we're not 
of straight. Oh, yeah. As I said, it's awkward just using one clamp. Two clamps would be better, but how do you get two clamps on here? You can't. Ah, too much. I still need to glue back in. I know my arm keeps getting in the way, sorry about that, but. I want to try them with a different angle. I'll tell you what, I'll pop over that angle you can see for this side. Right, I'll do one more after this one, see if we can get it right. Hopefully that's right. Again, drill it in first, spy it. It. Now, screw which is here. <laughs> yes, and it moved there again. Or is it moved there? Yeah, it's moved there slightly. As I said, two clamps would have been better on this job. But you can't have everything. Right. So, right, we got it. Right, let's see. Can we do this left handed, do you think? Probably not, no. Whoop! Not easy doing it with that hand. This is the advantage of using the surge for as, as an impact. Because it's hydraulic, it doesn't make a lot of noise. I'll give him a Milwaukee that one. Cheap and cheap and it does the job. Yeah, any place. Right. Okay, we'll do another one, and this time I'll bring the camera to the other side. I've got an idea, but you might be able to see better. Okay then. Right, try another one. <laughs> right, same your story again. Quite a little mark. It doesn't have to be a great big thick mark if you're only marking it to make sure that you don't over glue. I mean, that one there's got glue coming out of it. And it's actually surprising as well how actual squint some of these blocks actually are. I mean, in the sense how uneven they are. I'm used to working in steel and steel far better material. Mind you, I'm not going to say you can't get warped steel either. You can, but generally we can straighten it out. But wood, well, it would take too long to try and straighten it and level it. You'd need a proper plane and machine and everything for it. It's not worth it, just live with it. It is only for the runners, for the stairs or steps for your decking. I said I'm only doing this to actually show you how easy it actually is and you can save yourself some money. You could use any type of saw, you could use a jigsaw, you could use a circular saw, you could use a hand saw if you're really that way inclined to do it like my dad likes to try and Say, oh, I'll come along, Kai, with my saw. Yeah, your hand saw. Yeah, I keep telling him, I don't think so. There's not much point in him spending all that money buying me saws to use, right? And then him wanting to use a hand saw. He just does it just to annoy his best myself. Well, I think he sounds a bit daft, but. Yeah. Right then. Oh, what I forget. Drill in the hole. I'll put this there just now, if you don't run away. I tell you what, this weather is lovely. I am absolutely loving this heat. Right, there we go. Now you can't see this one going in. So what I might do is do one more but show you the screw going in for this side. Right. Right, there we are, that's it in place. Brilliant, this one hasn't even moved. Right, see the impact here, going in for this side Can you see that or not? Oh, no. oh, a bit more. 
You have to be careful. If you over tighten these, you will split the wood. You're right on the end here. This is why I'm using two. The main screw that actually does hold the whole thing in place is actually this one. Because if you think of it, when it, you're looking at the runner, when the decking's got to be on it, that screw's got to be in there like that. And you're trying to pull it away. You see? You're not going to do it. Yeah, safely in. And if you notice, I slow down just at the last bit, about half half the distance on the trigger, and it automatically just stops itself turning. So there we are. So I'm going to move this now to a different position and bring you around to maybe this side <coughs> to have a look at it. Can we do that? Well, let's try. It might come out. It might not. Right. Leave that there. Grab another one of these. Pop this on here. A little pencil mark, and believe you me, that's all it takes. Nothing fancy. Now, glue. Too much glue on this one, but I don't care. It can be sanded. Oh, stupid glue gun! Caught the camera. Sorry about that, folks. Yeah, accidents do happen. There's a bit of wood. There it is. Right. As I say, you don't really have to go on the full extent on this one to lunge them down. You don't have to use as many screws in them as I'm using. The one there should really and truly actually suffice, to be honest with you. Let's see, yeah, this one's moving about too much. This one here, go further on. Yeah, it's pulling, so I'm not quite right there yet. Yeah, stop pulling it. That's bad. Actually, not as much glue came through that one as I thought. Come on, get out of it. There we are. But try not to get this glue on uh, your body because it really is absolutely evil. A bit tighter. Right, I'll just draw this out here. It makes it easier to start the screw because it's gone directly into place then. You've got to watch the torque of the impact though, because they can throw it. Right, of course, I'm not going to hold it there, am I, this time? Okay then. Here comes the awkward bit. Okay, I'll try doing it this way around. And he hasn't moved. Brilliant. Okay, let's go on with the others. Okay, this is 130 mil. carry on I'll get these done and then we'll have a look at the end result mind you can see the end result over there but still it'll be nice to see if it's actually done right then I'll get on then right now you can see I finished it now and you can see it just basically the same as that one except it's lying down here but as I say when me and my dad went to wex with my son and we looked at it we were looking at it that's where the treads went on up there it's not, it's on this bit here the tread actually went. Once it solved that problem out, the rest was plain sailing. Now, I'll show you how to get these angles. You see me putting them on now, how easy they are. Yeah, alright, so you'd have to go at the same degree with the screws, right? Uh, 
and uh, there were one more job the ends have to be cut a certain way that end along there is cut off 45 in other words you take that end along there you mark that distance there along there and you actually cut that piece off along there I'll show you in more detail and this one here you do at this end but I'll just show you that now ah, before I do that I'll actually let you see the whole thing in case I'm trying to hide something behind the back okay there now you see it all there you see so now I'll just turn the camera around now leave it running and I'll show you what I mean yeah, put that there. now with this one you put this one which is the same as that piece there onto there like so you mark up like like so and you just pencil line and you cut that piece off so when it sits on the floor that end along there will be at 45 which is this one here i suppose you want me to show you that one as well okay then i will all right and this one here is a 45 and this one here is cut like so into place like so like that so that end will be the one that sits flush up against the wall because this is the height bit here don't worry about that bit just yet and you see it goes like so pencil line down it and there you have mark and cut so tonight when it cools down a bit i'll show you which my what my next stage is and i'll explain to you what i'm going to be putting onto them and all the rest of it then it's getting too hot now and i feel as if i've done enough for the time being okay then well now i get my next favorite job sanding seem to like sanding things down so me all's over sand now you don't really have to sand down uh, this type of material to be honest with you because most of it you'll never see although mines will be on display and you will be able to see them all i'm going to do is you're supposed to be able to sand down this glue and it comes off straight away so we'll put that to the test now i think okay, and let's have a quick look see if it is going to sand it off okay then right down there john <laughs> So just sand it down but it leaves little holes though behind in it though because it's kind of like uh, it's like that foam spray you get in a tin you put on this stuff sort of similar to that if you get residue it just it bubbles up like that anyway i'll get on i'll give this a quick sand down all right and we'll see how we go for there then okay now see this is an, another process you don't really have to do but unfortunately mines are going to be seen the way that i'm going to be doing this okay then people that is me finished the sanding now just to prove to you that i did actually sand it all down all two boards both sides okay. there we go if you can see that oh, it's still coming out yet still bits in there yet see it's surprising not a bad little sander this but really should have got the 240 volt one not the 110 however it's life anyway next job is is to give it three coats of decking oil and leave it now till next year and eventually when it all gets built it'll get its last coat so it'll be four coats of decking oil as i say you don't have to go to the extreme length that i went need to put as many screws in one would probably do this one here on the tread good quality glue as well and as for sanding them all down you don't really have to do that either because strictly speaking you're never going to see them anyway but mind you are going to see them so i thought i might as well do it now and get it over and done with as i'm doing it so anyway you see how easy it actually is it's just basically getting this angle and getting something to cut it as i say you could use a jigsaw you could use a circular saw you could use a hand saw if you like that way out like my dad but uh, to pot with that i'm using power saws so you can do it and you'll save yourself quite a lot of money by actually doing this because to buy these they are expensive so anyway my name's melton the channel's got a little melto if you like what i've done thumbs up if you haven't thumbs down subscribe if you want and if there's anything here that you don't understand put in the comments below 
and I'll get back to you and hopefully I can correct it. So anyway, goodbye now and thank you very much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed it because I've enjoyed making this actually. I feel like I've achieved something and I'll see you the next time when I'll be going on about something else. Who knows what. Okay then, bye now.